after many months of um, effort and um, thinking about these uh, global issues, um, we come to a closing of, um, of these remarkable uh, sessions and panels that have been held for uh, two and a half days. Firstly, I would like to thank uh, the President uh, for communicating with us the status of uh, the foreign affairs. Um, I guess that um, when, when we first picked the, um, the word uh, or the words Global Creative Leadership Summit, uh, it does say a lot uh, in, um, in terms of, um, of all our discussions and where we actually have to go. Yes, we are uh, a global world, but we are a village. Uh, yes, we need uh, creative thinking. We need creative thinking. And actually, creative thinking for me, what it means, because the definition is, uh, could be very different for different people, creativity is when you basically start creating in the void. What do you actually need to create? You first have to have a lot of confidence in yourself. You, um, for those, because going into a void or a space, uh, and if you go alone, it's somehow very, very difficult. We're asking countries, we're asking Washington, because it's one of the leaders of uh, this world economy. I don't know if we can say that for very long, but anyway. Um, it's, um, it's difficult. It's difficult when you've had habits that are good and habits that are bad. It's difficult for them to change a machine. It's difficult to come and accept that the world that they've basically recreated with their policy needs a new management style. If you look at um, the global needs, uh, I think it was much easier before with those needs to manage in a Cold War situation. There was not this complexity. You almost need a different brain to manage today. I think the brain of our children is going to probably be different from our brain. Because once you're trained on a computer, when you have a lot of visual uh, interaction, uh, you are going to be faced with uh, a different uh, type of brain. Now, what do we actually need to lead? We need to lead humility. We need to tie into our senses and listen. We need to be able to see, to touch others. So what's the probability of having the leadership in Washington be able to develop those senses? If we don't develop those, what will happen and what are the consequences? So in the last two days, we tried to bring forward messages that will be transcribed on paper, on the internet, for the heads of states, and for different audiences on the net. And we've talked about positive issues and negative issues. And we've talked about the consequences of where science and technology is going to lead us if we don't change. We spoke about bioweapons that will be accessible to many at a very low cost. We spoke about cyber weapons that are accessible. So to create 9-11s, because 9-11 sort of was a complicated sort of master plan, but to create another terrorist attack will be very easy and easier as time goes by. Now, should we change because of that? No, we should change because we should be doing the right things. So if we look at 9-11, have we learned anything from it? The financial crisis, will we have learned and we're just beginning to feel the pain? It's going to be a long-term pain. Have we learned anything from it? Do we know why it really happened? Because if you don't go and fetch the reason behind everything, 
will never solve the problem. If you don't admit that you're an alcoholic, you will never become better. So the question is, how do we become aware? And I think the media and the internet is one of our greatest tools to communicate to the people and have a bottom-up solution. Because it's through dialogue, it is through the communication and knowledge that we'll get the audience concern of global issues. How do we get someone in Arkansas concern about something that happens in Cuba or in Africa. He doesn't even know where Dubai is. You know, there's certain surveys that really scare us. When you start asking some, some people in America or other countries as well, where is Dubai? They'll tell you it's in Canada. We first of all have a problem with our education system. We have to always start with our education system. But the more money that we pour into military and that we spend on other things, the less money we'll have to educate our own people. We are all global citizen of the world. And when we say that, it means we have to invest in it. Most of the actions that are not taken from Doha is not a question of money. If Doha is signed, it would hurt 25% of the farmers to actually, we, actually we could work out a, a sort of a program to diversify their, those efforts. And what about, well, if Doha was signed, it would save so many other lives outside of America. It would save a lot of lives and give a chance to those in Africa to have an independent economy, to start exporting Sending aid is not the solution. We are sending $40 billion of aid today in Africa. $20 billion comes from the America. Will America have the money to pay those bills in the future? Another question. But what it really, it's not about money. It's about our freedom. We all believe in freedom of the humankind. And the day that we realize that Doha is really not signing Doha brings violence. And when you have a lack of dignity or a man loses its dignity, what will he do? He could be encouraged to violence. And that's not where we want to go. So there are many issues, Kyoto, the environment. We spoke about a lot of security issues. All of it is interlinked. Now our global agencies are not empowered today. They have to be more efficient. We have to empower them to make decision. We have to respect when they make a decision. We cannot go and start a war in Iraq if the United Nations disapproves. Otherwise, why ever come to a meeting if nothing is going to be respected? So I think America has a lot to, a lot to do. And I want to say something. The, about President Bush. I don't think what we're living today has been created in the last eight years. It's decades of issues that we have not solved. You know when you have a relationship with someone and you're not solving issues and they become so important and you just increase the temperature and then it erupts? Well, with a country and a company, it's always the same thing. If you don't deal with issues as they come along, Kyoto should have been signed. We've been speaking about these things a lot. 